This is parts from an RSX. This is for my buddy John across the street. If you're watching this, hopefully give you some ideas. So he's building a turbo kit for his car and he has been watching our videos and coming up with his own ideas how he wants to do stuff. And I said, collect your parts, put it together. That needs an O-ring in there, buddy. You can't use RTV. So he's been collecting parts getting fittings and he wants this stuff put together so he can kind of roll on it so the rsx pan this is where he's already drilled his hole he was going to run a bulkhead fit and i told him not to i said let's uh weld a fitting in there i'm gonna have to strip that looks like it's painted i'm gonna have to strip that paint off there before we weld it so aluminum fitting he bought for that so there's a bunch of companies that offer this stuff obviously vibrant uh does this stuff this is a weld on bunk that's the part number in case you're looking to duplicate some of this stuff. Drain is very important. Any of the oil feed and drain on a turbo kit is important. You don't want to have leaks. Bulkhead, give you an idea, it's almost like a nut and bolt that goes through there. Imagine this with a longer thread on it, kind of like something like this. Imagine this going through there with a washer and then a nut on the back side. This is a lot of that DIY stuff, and it will work, I'm not knocking it. But if you got the chance, do it right. Don't do it where it's going to cause an issue. Uh, if this goes through there, when you're tightening the drain onto this, this will constantly do this, and it's going to work its way loose, or the seal is going to fail, and it's going to leak. You're going to have that typical turbo kit where it leaks oil from every possible location, so it's no good. So basically putting a fit in and weld down there this is steel by the way it has to be aluminum if it's an aluminum pan has to be a, an aluminum fit in so what i like to do is weld it directly on there uh, this is the water crossover tube he wants he cut that <laughs> i'm gonna have to clean that up but this needs to be welded on there uh, this other piece right here this goes into the back he wants this cutting down this is another dash 10 once this cutting down right here and putting that fitting on there. Uh, this piece, uh, this he wants just this line right here, removing and welding. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to make almost a full episode on doing this just because I get asked about it. And just like John, he's watching our videos and trying to get ideas. And it's it makes me realize how many people do look on the internet and try and find ways to do this stuff and there's so much false information out there and people just you know hack and stuff so let's do this first let me show you how to take the fitting out of there this is the flip car if you haven't watched this episode this is the tsx that we're building and doing a full restoration on this car is turning out beautiful by the way this is the burt hatch one episode nine episode 10 is pretty much going to be the finale it's going to be finished exhaust uh tuning driving it that kind of thing so give you an idea, if you're not familiar with LHT Performance, I've been doing this since 1996 and I don't do it the way anybody else. I don't do a business model. I'm not here to be a factory and try and turn out as much money as possible and have three people welding all day long and, and you know, a dozen people packing boxes and uh, 10 lifts. I, I just don't have that kind of interest in working at a factory, even if I own the factory. If I don't do the job or want to do the job, I won't expect anybody else to do it. It's passion based. I do what I like and I'm so fortunate and again, I don't mean to come off cocky. Every job I've had since I started work at 15, every job I'd had for the longest time sucked. And if your job sucks, you don't do very well at it. You don't enjoy it. You don't do a good job. You're not doing any favors to your customers. It's just a job. This isn't just a job. This is my life. I just figured out how to make money doing it. I don't make a ton of money, but I hire a person, I have myself, I have a family, the bills are paid, the lights are on, we're in a little small shop, but you know what, I'm enjoying it, that's what it's all about, that's something that is so easy to miss these days, and I try to have this conversation with so many people that are in these jobs that they hate, you got to love your job, and then figure out a way to make money doing it, right? So, let's get on with this thing. First thing we're going to do is remove this rubber hose, because when this welds, this whole thing is going to get hot. This tube is going to get destroyed. I don't know if it's something he needs, but let's go ahead and take that off. So this ND is using, this is what we're going to remove right here. This whole piece, 
is aluminum from the factory. This here is a push-in steel piece. Same as this here, you can kind of see this has the ridge right here. This one, often you can sometimes warm this up and rotate this, sometimes you rotate it cold. But this you can actually change the direction of it. Uh, if it does come loose, take it out, clean it, put a little Loctite in, push it back in. You see this flange right here? You can actually put a wrench that sits on that flange and actually tap that in. This isn't like that. This is usually a pain to come out. What I would do first, put it in your vise. Don't pinch this thing flat, but put a little bit of force on it and see if you can twist it back and forth and see if it'll move in there. Sometimes it will. Worst case, if for some reason it gives you all kinds of issues, you can cut it off flush, run a drill in there and remove just the steel portion. You wanna get back to the aluminum, remove the steel and then you can weld this up. And again, sometimes these will break loose. I always give them a shot first. Often they don't. There it goes. Heard it click. It moved in the housing. Yep, it's moving. So put a little bit of force on it. You don't want to make this completely flat because what it does is when you pinch it this way, it expands on the other side and often gets in there even tighter. But, but this is coming off. It's hard work. <laughs> Hopefully it looks easy on camera. There it goes. See what I mean? That's a push-in sleeve right there and you see by pinching it it actually distort that and make it harder. So try and put your vise further down here. Now we're down to straight aluminum. I can weld that. We've got to remove that paint first, so let me hit this with a wire brush. See if we can get a little bit cleaner. Now I'm going to clean on the inside. So as we weld it, it doesn't all go contaminated and get funky on me and leak. And what I would do is just have a drill bit that fits in there. Um, let's see, maybe a quarter will do it. Next size up, 17 60 fourths. A little bit bigger, 9 30 seconds. I thought you just love fractions. Why didn't the whole world go to millimeters? All you European guys are probably screaming. This is such a good design too, because it sits in there so tight. Sometimes when you pull it up, you cut your fingers on the drill bit. Getting the drill bit out, so let's pull out two. I was lucky in my apprenticeship days, we were one of the last classes to do fractions, SAE, domestic, whatever you want to call it. We actually learned both, so I actually joke in the videos, some people get my humor, some people get annoyed. The European thing and the kilometers and the kilograms, and I just joke, and again, my sarcasm humor is a little weird. Uh, the average American doesn't know it. I, I do, and I should just, you know, sometimes uh, put a disclaimer that I'm joking. I do use millimeters and centimeters and kilometers and fractions and liters and gallons and feet and miles and tenths. Even though fractions are a little bit silly. I'm trying to explain to somebody 1467 you know, and you watch them kind of, you know, add it up. That's not a real number, by the way. All right, welder. Kick this on. Let's set this up. Put this sucker on AC. This is set up for DC right now. I see the large cup we have. This is for doing stainless. We've been doing stainless and uh, titanium just this week. So we're going to change this. What I like to do is have two or three tungstens. One's already sharpened, so you can use it for stainless and titanium and then a couple of them that are already balled up for aluminum. If not, you get your sharp one. As soon as you use aluminum, it balls up. Now that one has to be ground down for stainless and you go through twice as much tungsten. It's, it's very wasteful. So how many of you guys start welding? 
and realize you didn't turn your gas on and then you ruined your tungsten. Or forget to put it on AC. So even though I cleaned it, the aluminum is pretty crappy. Now I'm a big Honda fan, but the aluminum quality on a lot of the Honda stuff is really, really crappy. And I think it's just the casting. It's really poor. So while I'm running aluminum, let's go ahead and do the pan. Give that a second to cool. So. This here. What I often like to do is drill a hole big enough, if you can see that. So we can get a weld on the inside. The aluminum is kind of thick. I don't think that's going to happen. Let's clean this pad up a little bit. Let's get it a little bit decontaminated too, so it doesn't go south on me. Good. Let that cool. You see that? So we've got a nice attached piece. Now, got to be extra careful with this part right here. This is the taper. This shape right here is the exact match to the other part that goes on. Don't damage that. Once you're done with your pan, once it cools, Put a rubber sleeve on it, put a cap. Sometimes, uh, like these steel ones, they come with this cap. Put it on there to protect it. If you damage that surface, even a small scratch, that is like a valve in a seat. If they don't fit properly, it'll leak. And I see it so many times, people put this stuff together and it gets scratched, and then it's no good. You gotta cut the fitting off and redo it, so. Be careful of this guy. Onto our steel portion of the movie. This is the part that screws into the block. This is what you're using to tighten it. If you have noticed this, this sticks out the block about this much. What I would do is I would cut it about three eighths of an inch off. Then you're fitting right here. This is steel. What I like to do is, is it focusing? You guys see it all right? What I like to do is leave this on and leave the nut on there cut this off that way when you're tightening this in this is the nut that you're tightening it in with so we're gonna have it stick out about that much then he's gonna put an AN 90 on here and clear anything in the way so cut this about 3 8 now I joke about the gloves do wear your glasses don't mess around with your eyes so get off wires So clean the inside just for the raggedy edge plus any kind of corrosion in here. You don't want it going into your weld. Right, just use one of your internal tools right here. Even a small Dremel with a sanding barrel on it. Obviously if it gets hot, let go. Or put a glove on. So that's all we need to do. Help it from contaminating your well. Plus, when the customer gets it back, it looks a little prettier, and you can remind him to run coolant in there. That way, it won't rust. All right.
right, back to our saw. So we're gonna preserve this. Again, make sure that this seal here, you're not gonna damage. So we wanna protect that from hitting the saw. This part we don't want, we're gonna keep that hex. So what I'd probably do is grip onto this portion. <laughs> So cut this as square as you can, then you're going to need to sand that, same thing, Dremel the inside. Alright, switch back to DC, changing my cut size right here. So this is obviously, hole is much smaller than this, so as long as it's somewhat centered, just kind of eyeball it right here. And we're going to switch to stainless. I'm welding at about, let's see, uh, I got it set to 100 amps, obviously. I don't need to give it 100 amps. Let's see how it looks. Why is that on DC? Just switch that, it switched back to AC. That was the last piece right there was this crossover tube. He wants an AN on there. I think he's just deleting all the rubber hoses and making everything AN. It's really cool. Once you get into this stuff and you know how to build hoses, it really is much cleaner. So this stuff all needs to be just kind of cleaned. This, don't mess with the surface like I talked about. You can paint this portion, but just don't damage this. Keep this intact. There it is. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. If it did, give us a thumbs up. Hopefully you found that interesting and give you some ideas. Like I always keep saying, it's not always about just trying to promote the channel. It's about giving you ideas for people that follow us. And the feedback I get when people say, hey, thank you for doing that. It really helped me. That's what it's all about. We're back on the Burt Hatch. If you haven't seen, we're on, uh, we're on episode 9. We're filming for episode 10 right now, which is the exhaust. If you don't see that, if you haven't seen it, it's in the playlist. Go click on the playlist. You'll find something in there that you like, I'm sure. But that's the end of the video. See you in the next one. Don't forget, enjoy your cars. And thanks for watching.